Hey, it's Tom, and in this video, we're going to go over some of the caveats of importing DXF files in the Design Edge software for Plasma Cam. All right, so as you guys have heard me say over and over, uh, one of the best parts about the Plasma Cam system is the Design Edge software. That software makes the drying the cut paths, everything so drop dead simple that you can really just focus on what you're trying to get done and not have to be an expert in CAD or G-code or, or things of that nature. Uh, it's one of the things that, that originally drew me to using this tool because I didn't have any experience with that kind of thing. Um, over the years, I've gotten a whole lot better with it. I've you know, really dove into CAD and things like that. But Design Edge is still my go-to for those you know, down and dirty imports, you know, just, just Somebody comes to me with a project, hey, here's this picture, can you get this done? And I come in, you know, scan it, import it, cut it, out the door, right? Gravy work, and it's great, you know, great way to do this. But sometimes, we get into these issues where it's a little more complicated. Um, I ran into this myself, and uh, another viewer and friend, uh, Nick, uh, reached out to me uh, via email the other day, and I haven't had a chance to call him back to go over what his problem was, and I realized, hey, why not just make this a video because it could probably help other people as well. So let's take a look at what it looks like when you import a DXF file. If you guys don't know what that is, it's the drawing, I think I want to say it's called the design exchange format or drawing exchange format. It's an old AutoCAD format for taking 2D images or 2D drawings and being able to exchange it. So you know, put it between different kinds of programs, right? So DXF is a very common format for two-dimensional drawings. Um, and, uh, but, and most times it works great, depending on how it was done. Uh, where I run into problems is if I've used some sort of converter to create that DXF file. So if I'm not working with, with a native CAD drawing, if I'm working with a graphics file and use something to convert it to DXF, Oftentimes there's artifacts in there and that's what this is going to talk about. So thank you very much for watching. Sit back and I hope this helps you out. All right, so we are in Design Edge right now and we're going to uh, look at the way that we do the current workflows or the way that I do my workflow for importing a DXF file, so a two-dimensional CAD drawing into the Design Edge software. Um, you know, it's a pretty straightforward process. You can open them directly. Uh, one of the updates in Design Edge did that, but let's say I want to import that into another drawing, and that's what I typically end up doing. So I click on File, Import, and let me find one. Uh, let's go to one that I do often. You guys have seen me do this all the time. We're going to look at the military logos, and let's just pick number three. I don't even know which one this is. Oh, it's the Army. Okay, so Army logo. Okay, and you notice there's, there's two versions that come in with this, and Everything selected is in this yellow, I think yellow, not green. Um, sorry, I'm colorblind, but uh, it's in this bright color. Right? And there's two different kinds. There's a single line version for cut, uh, cutouts, and then there's an actual like um, uh, uh, one that gives you a, a, a wider cut for each of these. Right? So you might use one of these on like a laser, or uh, maybe you're doing a router, 3D, you know, 3D routing. Uh, with with the plasma cam, I typically choose uh, the one that has the the wider kerf width in there because that's more realistic on on what can be. Um, I've experimented a little bit. These actually come out pretty nice, uh, pretty nicely. So it's just personal preference on what you want to do for your design. But you notice I click away and everything is white. And when it's white, it's telling me that it's disjointed pieces, right? So I click on that. It shows it as one thing. This one, you know, as I click on it here, the U, you can see. Let's zoom into that part here. You'll see that portions of this, as I click, are segments, right? So in the design, or in the DXF file, each one of those is showing up as a segment, right? So uh, let's let's zoom. Whoops. Let's zoom back out to our whole thing. And what I typically do when I start is I just select the whole thing, and I press the J button or the Join command, which is the same as this button right up here called Link. Right, I press it, and when I click away, you'll see it changed colors. Right, this allows me to immediately go into working uh, on on the 
on the part itself, right? Nothing special. I don't have to do anything else. I can just start, you know, start doing it. Um, and typically for like my military logos, and these are ones that I, I, I actually purchased when I first got the machine uh, to give me a little something to work with. Uh, this is typically what I do. I start there. I you know go to um, convert to cut path, and maybe I start here at the top, and it automatically convert holes. Yes. Right, it does all the work for me, and I can click start and go. Right, I don't have to do anything else. Right, really, really simple process. Um, but let's say that there's some gotchas in here, and this happens quite a bit to me uh, when I'm converting graphics files into DXF files and then importing them into uh, into the design of software. And Nick, this is a uh, um, uh, let's not change. Yeah. So Nick, this is the issue that, that you're running into. So I'm going to go ahead and import a logo. This is uh, one that I'm doing. Uh, you guys have seen some of my other videos that I've been working on for these guys. It's uh, uh, Sludge Coffee Roasters. And so I had a, a I had a JPEG of their, their logo. And I used a, an, just one of those free tools online to get a DXF file from that. And so when I import that, um, and you see, it came out really nicely, actually. It looks, it looks pretty good. Uh, but there's a couple of things that I noticed right away. The first, see this little itty bitty thing down here? That's the table size. So this, from a size perspective, is very, very large. I'd want to rescale this. For this tutorial, not really necessary. You guys know how to do scaling. It's pretty straightforward. Select it, do the scale button, and then adjust your size, either visually or by typing in a number, right? What I'm more focused on right now are two things. One is that there's some paths that aren't closed, like this S and E. But also, um, there's another little thing in here that, um, that throws people off sometimes, and that's called layers. Right? Uh, Design Edge doesn't always do great with, with, uh, with layers, and neither do these uh, automated tools that do like tracing um, for, for your DXF. Or to create the DXF. So my normal workflow would be, hey, let's just select the stuff here, link it together, and now everything appears like it's ready to go. But when I go to do my cut, I'm going to have a real problem. And even if I, if I say here, you know, shift new, or shift N for new, and I went to this one, you know, it's going to complain because it's not on the table. But it, it creates this, you know, this part here, right? It's ready to go. But guess what? Let's let's undo that. This is actually two of them, right? There's a second one underneath it. And so this really throws things off. Let's, um, let's undo that. So remember that S, right? That one wasn't joined together. I can move this away. And look, there's another one underneath it that was joined. So if I just undo, let's go back to how it was when I first came in and I were to just select the S, and move it out of the way, look, there's the joined one, here's those pieces, right? There's no good way that I'm aware of to get around this. What I typically end up doing, I stick with my usual workflow because I, I'm familiar with it, but for every part, I'll come there, I'll press the delete key. If it's still there, I'll select it again, press the delete key until it goes away, and then I do undo. And I will do that for every piece of this drawing until I'm certain that there are no duplicates. Because otherwise what happens is you cut and then it comes in to do it again. And you won't know why it's doing that. It's just all of a sudden, hey, why, why is it cutting this part that's already done? And we're still, if that drop is the part that you're keeping and it's shifted it all, because it's fallen into the grates a little bit or whatever, you could ruin your part, right? So this is one of the things, especially when I'm working with files that I didn't create or files that I have been imported, I always do this. And in this case, um, this one, I used a free file uh, conversion that I had to actually go in. I used uh, um, Fusion 360 after I did the conversion to clean up all the junk that they had added into it and um, and uh, even then, I didn't catch the fact that there were two layers, that there was one on top of the other, because you'd never know to see it. 
they are literally right on top of each other. It doesn't show up as separate layers like in Photoshop where you, you might, or um, Illustrator where you might see that there are two layers. It's like drawing two lines on top of themselves. The computer knows it's there, but you're not going to know it. So you're just going to have to go through the process of cleaning it up. So I hope this helps uh, everybody. I hope this helps you guys that are using uh, Design Edge. And uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Okay, so I know this particular video was very focused on uh, Plasma Cam users, but uh, thank you for watching. If you stuck around, I really appreciate it. Uh, if you didn't know, we do have a Facebook page. I'll put up a link. Um, let's see. Gotta think about which corner. It'll probably be up here, right? I'll put a link up there for, to our Facebook page. We also have an Instagram page and a Twitter page as well. So I'll put those. Uh, I'll put those in in here as well, so you guys can uh, uh, check those out. I post pretty regularly to all three of those uh, different social media uh, outlets. I don't always get a chance to create these videos. And I've been trying. Uh, you guys may have noticed I've been trying to do these like little snippets here and there of, of what's been going on, but. It gets busy sometimes you know a picture and then it gets to Instagram and it pushes out to other places right so if you want to find out more about what's going on here in the shop that's a great way to do it thanks again for watching if you liked uh, what you saw today give me a thumbs up um, if you're not already a subscriber please consider subscribing to the channel every little bit of it helps uh, I do appreciate it and thanks for watching See ya.